Okay, here's another superstar of the microscopic world. Oh. That, uh, see up near the top, there's a stalk. There's a little sort of string coming out. Oh, so I'm yeah. going to focus down on that string so that you can see what it's, what's at the other end. And oh, there it is. Plant. You'd think it was a plant because it's yes. anchored, right? However, it gets its food by uh, material less. In fact, watch. See how the, the stuff goes zooming by and being pulled in? Oh, it's... Okay. Now, like right at the up. very tip are little hairs. Can you see them? Oh, yeah. Right over there. Right in there. Right. And they're, they're waving back and forth, creating a vortex or a whirlpool that pulls in food from the outside world into it. And some of it goes in through that opening at the top. This is one of the reasons why it's called, I think, a vorticella. Because of vortex. Because of making a vortex, yes. Now I'll change focus just a little bit. Now see, it didn't like that big one that went by, but so it's, it's still captured. It's still it's captured by the current, you see, by the vortex and pulled into it. So I think one of the reasons why it's very often studied by beginning biology students is because it's anchored, see, to something, and so therefore it so doesn't it, go swimming away. So, uh, and it's um, easy to see. Yeah. And when it, it in it are all the, all the things that are in a cell, the nucleus and all that kind of stuff, and as the food is drawn into it, it then extracts when it can and then sends out the food out through the same opening. Oh. So there is another really famous pond animal called a vorticella. Vorticella.